The title of this message is Spiritual Fornication, Apostate Churches. Is your church guilty of spiritual fornication? How do you know? In this message, I will explain the signs of spiritual fornication in the church. It is based on my book titled Great Apostasy. Spiritual fornication is evidenced by the lack of discernment among believers their use of leavened Bibles, their fondness for corrupt teachers and pastors, their adoption of pagan elements into their worship, their conformity to the ungodly ways and values of society, their promotion of counter-reformation doctrines, and their faithful adherence to a Christian status quo propped up by a self-serving academic cabal. Jeremiah wrote of this, How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 21 through 22. And Isaiah said, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. The fornicating church proclaims the words of academia, quoting lexicons, footnotes, and commentaries. And amidst this, they falsely declare they are taught and led into all truth by the comforter, when nothing could be farther from the truth. They insist that men of letters are the best conduits of God's word. As God did not preserve his pure words, so they say, rather they believe the truth is found in extra-biblical materials. Isaiah wrote that such a people have no knowledge of God's true word. How can they, if they insist it doesn't exist, but in old manuscripts, now gone to dust? Isaiah wrote, Therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. Isaiah wrote of the posturing in many churches. Wherefore the Lord said, Forasmuch as this people draw near to me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Pastors often teach that the broad way is only the world. By that they mean unsaved people who do not identify with Christianity, but express their disdain for it. Although that is true in part, it's not the whole of it. Jesus is talking specifically about the apostate church, people going through the motions, measuring up to a Christian status quo. That is where the many be which go, believing they are true Christians, saved, born again, indwelled by the Holy Ghost, and on their way to heaven. Jesus says no. If you are among the many, then you are likely on the wrong way. In the following verses, he explains what he means by those on the broad road. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 and 23. They say the right words and appear to do the right things, even prophesying, casting out devils, performing wonderful works, perhaps building churches, giving to charity, and helping the poor, all the while shouting, Lord, Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen, and so on. They're putting on a good show and many join in. Yet they are building their house on the shifting sands of outward appearance, and it will not stand. To a church in spiritual fornication, Jesus said, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
Here are the earmarks of the church in spiritual fornication. That is, it is a part of Mystery Babylon. Number one, your doctrinal statement and your pastor declare the word of God no longer exists. It was only found in the original handwritten manuscripts, and they no longer exist. All we have are close renderings, but with errors. Number two, your church uses one of many corrupt modern Bibles, and your pastor teaches that nearly all the translations are good. It just depends on which flavor you like. Number three, your church is a corporation of the state. A 501c3 charitable organization, handing out tax-deductible receipts for the government. Number four, your church incorporates worldliness into its worship. Things more akin to entertainment, pageants, glorification of musical performers, elevation of pastors and leaders in the church, observance of pagan holidays, masses, and the like. Your church functions in part as a mission field, rather than a set-apart community of believers. Your church engages in property acquisition and expansion of its investment portfolio. Your church teaches counter-reformation doctrines of futurism and dispensationalism. Number eight, your pastors and leaders are divorced and engaged in adultery and fornication. Number nine, your church is ecumenical fellowshipping with Rome, which is Mystery Babylon. And number 10, your church teaches tithing, which was abolished with the Levitical law. These and many other things are the trademarks of a church guilty of spiritual fornication. Those in such churches are on the broad road where the many go, and Jesus spoke against it. Conversely, the narrow road is where the few go and few there be that find it. Finally, Jesus commanded true believers to come out of the fornicating church. He said, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Such churches and persons therein run the risk of having their names blotted out of the book of life and being cast into the lake of fire unless they repent. Thank you for listening. May God go with you.